speaking to me now is Arvon Valley middleweight Geraint Goodrich. Um, Geraint, last time I was speaking to you, you were getting ready for your Welsh title fight against Daniel Barton. Um, unfortunately, that fight didn't happen. Um, can you just tell people uh, why you uh, refused the opportunity to fight for the Welsh middleweight title? Yeah, what happened um, was Dan Barton unfortunately became ill with um, pneumonia. Um, bloody hell, it was quite worrying. He was in a, a life-threatening condition. Um, I think he, he picked up sepsis as well. Um, so, obviously, he, he was unable to box, so I had to pull out to the fight. Uh, I wish Dan all the best um, with his recovery. Um, then there was a step in opponent uh, by the name of Jake Anthony, uh, which the board didn't sanction the fight. Uh, so... <sighs> 2018 finished on a, a real downer, really. I, I ended up boxing a journeyman boxer um, who came up from London, and the decision was, well, you know, I think everybody uh, who's seen it on the telly uh, has got their own opinion on the decision. Um, I was unfortunate because I promised my boys I'd fight for a belt on the telly, my, my, my little boys. Um, that, that didn't go ahead, so I had to explain to them just before Christmas, why they didn't have a belt for Christmas. Um, but I suppose that's, that's part and parcel of boxing. And uh, we're in 2019 now, and I'm trying to put myself in the picture for a, a shot in 2019. Um, regarding the situation with Barton and Jake Anthony, um, Barton pulled out of the fight. Um, there was a little bit of confusion, and, and people were a little bit unsure what was going to happen. And then it seemed to be almost a given that Jake Anthony was going to be given the shot. Um, even though Jake only had, like, I think it was two fights at that stage, but he did have quite a lot of amateur experience. Um, what, what was the reason the border control refused to sanction that fight? Um, I think it was the, the opponent that Jake had boxed um, wasn't up to scratch to, for somebody to go forward then and box for a, for a Welsh title. That's what I, I was believing, but it was like a, a downer, Dan's out, this is my dream, I'd sort of give up um, my work, I'd gone into full-time training camp, next minute we've got a, a breath of fresh air, we're back in the gym, Jake's in front of us, we, we, we train him for a, another 10 round title fight and then a couple of days before, bang, it all, uh, it all falls through and like I say, I ended up boxing in a four round fight against a uh, journeyman from, from a country and uh, it was just uh, you know a real a real downer in my boxing career. By fighting that journeyman, as opposed to fighting um, Daniel Barton or Jake Anthony for the title, I mean, I'm not sure exactly what you got paid, but I'm guessing when you consider that you didn't work for two months, that, that fight actually probably cost you money. Yeah, I was very lucky. I, was, I ended up on a ticket deal. Um, I was very lucky that my sponsors uh, stuck by me, who I'm, I'm really, really thankful of. Um, I felt I had to go ahead with the fight, but really it was, like you say, I'd, I'd lost out no end. It probably cost me to fight then. Um, and yeah, it was, you know, that, that's all really I can say, but was, I'm, I'm gutted it, it all fell through, you know. Did the, um, the confusion before the fight, did that affect your performance on, on the night during your four-rounder? No, I wouldn't say at all that the confusion um, affected my performance. Um, I think I may have boxed the most awkward journeyman in the, in the you know, in the, 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 the history of boxing. Uh, he kept, I, I think I caught him once in the first round, with which was a good shot. He was running away, he was ducking out. It was off. If you've seen it on telly, I, I'm sure it's, uh, it's on the internet, if you had a look at it. But what it was, I trained for a 10-round fight. So I jumped out to the ring, really, and maybe I, I didn't put enough into a fight. I don't know. It was just, um, I wouldn't say it affected my performance, but the way I had trained wasn't for the, the performance I give, you know? So um, after the, the, the disappointment of that draw, um, you, you move forward with another couple of fights before Christmas, and I believe there was another opportunity to fight Jake Anthony again, which just didn't happen. Can you just explain that to us? Yeah, I stayed in the gym because obviously uh, I was down. But when I'm down, normally that's when I'm at my, uh, I'm at my, um, you know, hardest working. Then, so I was down. I stayed in the gym with Darren. We were still training four times a week with JJ Evans and Jermaine Asari. He was still there, um, 
and I just said, look, I'm going to get out on the road because we'd lost out and, you know, going away, I'd have, I'd have a couple of paydays just before Christmas, I was hoping. Well, well with that, uh, the phone rings on a Friday, it's Jamie Arthur. Um, he said, they've offered you to fight Jake Anthony tomorrow in Neath. I thought, bloody hell, that's close, because I was going to go up to, to, up to London, or I ended up going to Manchester. Uh, will you fight him? Well, we'd been in the gym. I said, yeah. Um, 12 o'clock, received another phone call off Jamie. Oh, they've taken the fight against Liam Hunt instead. So I was like, oh, OK. Um, and yeah, I think Jake knew that I wanted to fight him. I think that his manager, his promoter knew I wanted to fight him. But for whatever reason, they have their opinions, I know. Uh, he fought Liam Hunt. Liam, Liam Hunt as well is, is, is a very good boxer, so he's a, he's a good opponent for Jake. But um, is that fight with Jake something you think will happen in the future? Yeah, say that, I, I got a lot of respect for Liam. Um, and uh, I, I think Liam has a lot of respect for me. He, he helped me train for the, the Welsh title. I was, I was his um, sparring partner. So I know that um, Liam hadn't been in the gym for a month before that fight with Jake. I just come off the back of a 10, 10 week training camp. So um, it, I heard his manager say that they thought Liam was the, the tougher opponent. Now I know that's not true. I drew with Liam on his home show um, up in Bristol. Uh, I think I even nicked the win. I think Liam maybe said, yeah, maybe you nicked it. You know, he's an honest bloke. So I don't know. Uh, don't know where all that Liam was the other opponents come from. As I said, I was I just come off the back of a, a ten or twelve week full time training camp, so I know I know I would have gone to Neath and uh, and beat Jake. And I'm open, I'm open, I'm praying the fight will come off because I will go and beat Jake. And I'm just recently taking things right up to date. There's you, you and Richie Gardner, who's Jake's a trainer and manager. You had a bit of um, a ding dong, shall we say, on Twitter. Yeah. Um, could you just explain to the, the viewers what exactly happened and um, where things are now? Yeah, there's just a, a couple of, you know, little niggles and, and things will happen, uh, you know, as part and parcel of the sport, I believe. I love the banter of it. I think it creates, um, you know, an audience for the fight, which I think a lot of people would want to watch it now. Like, nobody really knew uh, Jake and Richie before sort of all this Welsh title thing. So maybe I've got them in the, in the shop window a bit with my, uh, with my banter. Um, yeah, but whatever's gone on, like I say, I'm open to fight Jake. Um, I'm open that after the fight we'll shake hands. I know there's been a couple of, you know, um, things which might have been a bit beyond the line, but there's no problem with me, Jake or Richie, really. It's just, let's get it on and, you know, shake hands and have a beer after. So where are you in regarding to fighting for the Welsh title? What's your status? Um, I know you haven't, you haven't won your last few fights. Um, so have you got to go and get a win first or a couple of wins before you're allowed to fight for the Welsh title? I'd probably give you a look when I, I, you said about winning fights, Engi. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, I haven't, um, I am one fight. I go away. I always uh, fight the Polands who are unbeaten um, and I go away and give a good account, account of myself. You know, I, I like to think I'm a fighter who will go on the road and, and try and grind out the win. Um, I... I have a, um, a fight with a boy called Aaron Sutton now, which is quite close. It's in Bristol. Um, he's seven and all. Um, but if I was to go up there and rip a win away from Aaron, which I like doing, I like going away and trying my best to rip a win away, I, I think I'd perform better than, for instance, when the journeyman boxer come down. I think I got to fight if I go away and fight someone like Aaron Sutton. I know if I don't turn up, I could be getting carried out, you know? So um, I think one or two wins, I'm only one or two wins. Henry James has done it. Henry James, I don't know what Henry's record was. I got a lot of, got a lot of respect for Henry, but um, he'd had uh, a losing record and then he strung a few wins together. Next, next thing, he's fighting Gavin Gwynn for a Welsh title, which was pretty close. Then um, he's done the same again and box Kieran Gethin. So these opportunities will come and I, I believe I'm just six or eight rounds away from him, you know. You mentioned there uh, about being the away fighter, going to other people's home turf to fight. To fight. And um, boxing is notorious for examples of away fighters like yourself not getting the decisions or, you know, 
give, give, give him a draw rather than the victory as your way fighter. Yeah. But, but what's it like for you going into somebody's backyard where you basically you're expected to lose? They basically bring you in to, to lose. They look at your record, think, oh, is, is it a notch? And then you go and well, not act like a journeyman, basically. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get a very good reception. <laughs> Uh, as I'm going into the ring, especially when I start uh, my nonsense of pulling your head down. And, but um, no, uh, I always get clapped out. Um, I, I think I have out of every fight except for against Linus Udofia when I, I limped out. <laughs> no, um, yeah, it's, it's great going away because as I said, uh, when, when uh, the chips are down for me, that's when... I perform at my best. So every time I go away, the chips are down. I got the crowd calling me whatever they call me. Um, I got the, the referees maybe a bit in, in the, the other guy's favour. Um, but then I go and perform and, and I feel a bit, you know, um, I wouldn't say angry, but I feel a bit unlucky that I've had two or three draws on the road. And I've had some losses where I thought, well, that might have been a draw. And a draw might have been a win, you know. So my record, really, I wouldn't say, I know it's not great, <laughs> but um, I wouldn't say it's actually true to how it looks, you know. I think it was Dale Evans from West Wales who said that when he fought away, they, um, they booed him into the ring and they booed him <laughs> out of the ring. <laughs> but, sir, can you relate to that? Yeah, well, I've been booed in, uh, called a sheep shagger in the <laughs> ring. But I've, as I said, I've always been, I don't think I've ever been booed out. Um, no, I've always had a, you know, and I've always I spoke to the guys after social media is great. I normally speak to the boys on Facebook and I've always, you know, give a good account myself. And I got, I boxed um, Michael Jennings boy. I believe he boxed Mikhail Cotto. And now I, I speak to Michael on, on Facebook and I've got a lot of time for him. And I think doing that and going away and actually, you know, showing that I'm here, I'm ready for a scrap. I think it gets you a lot more respect than if you just you box journeyman at home and sell tickets, you know? So, so you feel whether it's Daniel Barton, Jake Anthony or anyone else, you are ready for that Welsh title shot? I think that there's... Um, Alex Hughes, I know, is bypassing uh, what I believe and going for a British title. I mean, Alex is 12-0 and, all and, you know, British title level. I said it on uh, James Lilly's podcast the other day. British title level, I think. Um, I boxed Linus Udofia and that's beyond me, you know. Welsh title level, I think I could, I honestly believe, and I, I, I can't say I definitely will because of things that happen, but I'm going and, and I think I'll get a Welsh title and I'd put myself in that, you know, in that um, category to be able, so whoever's about um, b below British title level then, once to fight for a Welsh title, I think I could go ahead and nick it. So, I mean, who are the guys around the Welsh middleweight level, around your level, obviously yourself? Jake Anthony, Daniel Barton, um, is, it, uh, is, it, is, that, is that about it? Yeah, I think that, uh, I know Ricky Rowlands is back in the gym, but he said he's doing light middle. I know Jordan Thomas, light middle. I don't think there really is anybody else at the minute, unless somebody, you know, uh, comes out of the woodwork and does a white collar and turns pro like I did. <laughs> you mentioned... Um, James Lilly's podcast there. I mean, you, you're on there the night and it's well worth watching um, Turn the Lights Out podcast. Yeah. So that was called, yeah. Um, you were on there with James Lilly, who's a professional boxer and MMA fighter and bare knuckle boxer, great character. <laughs> I've worked with James a couple of times on the commentary. That's street fighter, is he? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what was that experience uh, being on that podcast? Yes, always an experience when we're in the same room for two hours with James Lilly. <laughs> But uh, no, it was good, yeah, and um, anybody who has chance to get on there and, and give their opinion about boxing and whatever else he talks about, uh, MMA and the news, and uh, yeah, it's, it's worth going on or it's worth listening in, you know. And you mentioned earlier in the interview about the, the importance of your sponsors. I noticed you've got a couple of logos there on, your, uh, on your, your shirt. I mean, how important are your sponsors to allow you to continue your boxing career? Yeah, to... Um, to get the best out of myself in the gym, uh, nutrition-wise, traveling, um, uh, 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 gloves, bloody boots, um, anything really, you need sponsors. And I'm looking for uh, a couple more in 2019. I mean, my medicals are due as well. 
So uh, I'll be looking for more sponsors and the ones who have helped me so far. I'm really grateful, but yeah, they are really important uh, to help you, you through your career, you know. Um, a little debate we always have when it comes up now and again on Facebook and social media. You, you call yourself the Magic Man <laughs> as a nickname. <laughs> well, you, you got Magic Man on your shorts, so that's, that's a name you endorse. But as I think, with your, your fighting style and the fact you're willing to go out and fight people, I, I much prefer the Avon Valley Road Warrior. So where are we on this now? Okay. You've got to be considering swapping over, I think, because I think it was you won an award recently over Christmas for, I'm not sure the, the actual title. Um, Road warrior there, so I mean, I mean, I mean, the press are almost calling <laughs> you it now. Yeah, well, uh, I'm sure uh, there's a couple of press calling me it now, especially you. You've always called me it, but no, uh, maybe I'll have the road warrior on the short ones just for you, Key. There we are, cheers, but this, uh, finally got uh, got my, rec my, my recognition as a name in a name in a professional boxer. <laughs> um, so I don't know if there's anything to add, Gary, before we uh, wrap this interview up. No, it's just. Um, I don't know if people have picked up on my social media that my dad is uh, very ill at the minute. He's in um, intensive care over Morris and he's been in there for 12 days now. And um, I'm fighting Aaron Sutton uh, March 30th. It's been changed now, the, the date of the show. And I'll be uh, dedicating that to my dad. Obviously, I hope that my dad makes a, a full recovery. Um, he's, he's wired up to all machines and all sorts of I minutes. Mean, we've been over today and uh, I'm hoping it, uh, him all the best. But I will be dedicated that fight to, uh, up in Bristol in Ashton Gate Football Club on March the 30th to my dad. Um, I'd love to take a support up. So if anybody does want tickets, if they can hit me up on any of my social medias. And um, I'd love to take, uh, like I said, a Welsh, uh, a Welsh fan base up. Um, in support of me and my dad to get a win and let's go on and win the title in 2019. And uh, I believe you've also got a new uh, Twitter name, is that right? Oh yeah, I have my old one, I don't know, I think Jamie Arthur changed the password <laughs> when I wasn't looking one night. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, now at Mangeraint, so that's my new, uh, I don't know, the bloody Twitter, the made that email up it wasn't my decision it's a bit <laughs> shit but yeah Gary Goodridge is now on at man Gary into my Instagram and my uh, my Facebook are always uh, always busy get on there for a look <laughs> so uh, there we are thank you Gary um, good luck in the future hopefully you get your dream shot of that Welsh title and uh, look forward to some more Twitter wars sometime in the near future <laughs> cheers, cheers top man